Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. T. Ayodele Ajay. I'm a consultant psychiatrist working in the NHS, and I'm also a fellow of the Royal College of Psychiatrists and the convener and the founder of Tripart Care Emotional Wellbeing Hub, and also the convener of the Tripart Care Emotional Wellbeing Workshops. I'm delighted to be with you by video recording this afternoon. Um, it's a shame that I'm not able to be there um, in person to really give this presentation. The theme of my presentation for this afternoon is growing up worries and anxiety, what can we do about it? What I really hope to focus on this afternoon is the things that we as parents, we as care providers, social care providers, community leaders, community um, support workers can do in supporting our children to become socially balanced and mentally well um, adults and to really get the best out of their childhood. And I'm hoping that some of the thoughts that I'm going to share this afternoon would be of benefit to each one of us. So I've got a few slides that would anchor my thoughts and um, I'm just going to be sharing those. So what do we know about children's mental health and mental well-being? Already, I'm sure that some of these statistics would already have been shared this afternoon. However, we do know that 50% of mental illnesses are diagnosed by the age of 14. And also that 75% of mental illnesses are actually diagnosed by the mid 20s. We can look at these figures and think, oh my God, how, the, um, how, how, um, how disheartening these figures are. But we can also look at them and say, actually, there is an opportunity in helping our children to become mentally balanced adults. So it's, it's, it depends on whether we are seeing the glass as half full or the glass as half empty. I want us to see the glass as half full this afternoon because there are certain things we can actually do to help our young people, to help our children, to really help them with their mental well-being, to help them to deal with the anxieties, the normal anxieties of growing up. These days, children are faced with a lot of challenges. There's the anxiety about peer pressure. There's anxiety about bullying. There's the anxiety about being size zero for young women or young girls. There's the anxiety about being um, um, the, the most athletic, build, uh, well-built uh, person for the young, young boy or the young person. Uh, there's also the social media pressure. There are all sorts of things that are really, uh, that are really, tar that are really targeting young people and um, um, children this, in this day and age. And it's very important for us as their parents, as their um, sub -up community leaders, as people who are their teachers to help them to be able to deal with these anxieties and to um, come out strong from, um, from dealing with them. What else do we know about the mentors of young, of young people? We do know that 10% of school children have a diagnosable mental illness. And research shows that actually children, young, adult, young people and their parents and people who care for them have um, demonstrated a need to receive support. A lot of um, post-COVID, um, a survey was carried out by the Office of Health Improvement and um, um, Disparities. And what they found out was that a lot of parents actually said that they don't really know how to support their young people um, in their mental well-being. And a lot of young people as well and children also uh, reported that they don't know um, what to do with their mental well-being. So what the, the question is, how do you support a child in your care? with their mental well-being and their emotional well-being. The first thing I want to say is that in order to be able to support a young person in your care, be, 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 be a parent, a teacher, whatever capacity you are working in, you need to take care of your mental health and mental well-being first. Children learn best by imitation. They learn best by modeling. So in order for us to support the mental well-being of young people in our care, we need to be mentally well ourselves. And that's where it starts from. This model is a model that we use in tripart care to actually demonstrate the domains in which we can look at to maintain or to look after our own mental well-being. So there are six domains. There is not enough time to go through each of these domains, but I hope that you can take a photo of this and you can then reflect on, on these different domains. The domain of trust, that's to do with faith. Usually we know that um, there's lots of um, evidence supporting faith and mental well-being managing your thoughts, your mindset, your limiting beliefs, re reframing your own thoughts, dealing with your own temple, your body. Physical health has a lot to do with mental health and mental health has a lot to do with physical health. Um, getting enough sleep, getting enough sunlight, managing your relationships. And for those who have experienced trauma, really not burying those traumas under the carpet and actually facing up to them and, and receiving help 
uh, all the other things that you can do. And of course, managing your time. And that includes energy management and also social media time management. So that's managing your own self, your mental well-being as an adult, and then going on to help your children or the children in your care to manage their own mental well-being. In that regard, one there are five things that the um the better better health mom campaign, which was a campaign that was um that was um, organized by every every mind matters campaign that took place immediately after we were coming out of the lockdown in 2020. They named five. They identified five different areas that anyone who has children in their care or young adults in their care can do to help those um, young people to manage their mental well-being. The first thing is to be there to listen. Being there to listen is asking children intentionally, creating a space where children know that you are really interested in them and you are creating an opportunity for them to express the way they feel. And this is something that needs to take place regularly. It's not a one-off affair. Either when you are driving them to school or bringing them back from school or when you are having dinner with them or having breakfast with them or over the weekend when you take them to their sporting activities. As so, it's important as parents, as caregivers, to create a, 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 a space for children to be able to be listened to. The other thing is to stay involved in their lives in terms of really getting interested in things that are important to them, be it sports, be it dancing, be it drama, whatever is important to that young person. Make sure that you also develop your own interest to know as much about those things in order to be able to, 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 to have a meaningful dialogue with them. The reason is because it's at such informal times that you can actually get them to speak about their own mental well-being and about, about their own emotional, emotional well-being. The third thing is to support positive routines. Children learn best by modeling. So the best way to get a child to sleep well is for us to have a good sleep hygiene um, technique ourselves. The best way to help them to eat well, to support their mental well-being is for us to have a healthy eating habit ourselves. The best way to get them to involve in exercise is for us to have a good exercise routine ourselves. So supporting positive routines is actually by demonstrating those positive routines and then encouraging their interest. So whatever it is that they want to get involved in, make sure you encourage that. Make sure you support them with time resource, financial resource, whatever it is. Um, because we do know that group activities is very important and very crucial to mental well-being of young people. And finally, take what they say seriously. That's by the way you listen to them by switching off your phone, switching off the television, switching off every distraction when children are talking to you, letting them know that you have your, they have your undivided attention, making eye contact, nodding, humming, all of those things, actually demonstrating and the feedback you give to them by actually um, speaking back to them and saying, this is what I understand by what you just said. Am I right? So really um, asking them again for feedback about whether you got them right or not and stating a plan agreeing with them that this is the plan, this is the this is what I've heard you say, and this is what we are going to do in order to address those issues. Um, so those are the five things that is important that we do um, as parents or caregivers in order to support our children's mental and emotional well-being. In terms of the other thing, so we've talked about three main, two main things now. One of them is taking care of our mental health. The second one is helping um, um, do, um, helping children to take care of them of their mental health, and I've talked about five different things. The fourth, the third thing, the third main domain is actually helping children to name and understand their own emotions. And on this slide, there are four different ways that you can help children to um to name their emotions. There are four different groups you could put their emotions in, and um there's not enough time to go through these domains now. But these are four. You can actually have this um carry out this exercise in your youth group, for instance, about naming emotions. And one of the things you can then do is, for instance, to reflect all these different emotions and um, um, help your children or the young people to actually categorize them into those four um, domains. Is it high arousal, positive emotion, high arousal, negative emotion, low arousal, uh, positive emotion, or low arousal, negative emotion? Like I said, there's not enough time to go into the ins and outs of those. But finally, the slide I want to share with you finally is one on the different resources that we can um, actually um, um, access online to help um, to help young people and to help parents as well in order to um, to gain tools um, to help young people manage their mental well-being. There's the Every Mind Matters website, which is full of lots of videos, lots of articles, particularly for young people 
the things that they can do to um, help with their sleep, um, reframing um, um, anxious thoughts, reframing their thoughts, um, dealing with um, unhelpful mindsets. There's quite a lot of resources on there in um, Every Mind Matters website. There's also the article that I wrote in Testify Magazine a couple of years ago, um, which is titled, What Children Need to Become Mentally Healthy and Socially Balanced Adults. That's the link for that one. There's also the youngminds.org.uk website, which is full of lots of um, um, resources, videos, um, articles, on helping young people. And also young people can actually go onto those websites as well. And there's the, mix, the mix.org.uk, which also has a lot of mental um, resources. And the Anna, Freud, um, the Anna Freud National Center for Children and Families is also a good resource. It actually gives, uh, there are a lot of tools on there that you can exercise that you can do with children in helping them managing um, to manage their mental well-being. Um, that's been a whistle stop um, tour of really supporting young people with their mental health and with, with their emotional well-being. But I hope that you have one or two um, take-home messages that you will uh, maybe look look into and um, action um, going forward. Um, thank you for listening. And um, thank you, um, Climax, for having me and um, for the great work that you do. Um, and I um, wish you further uh, meaningful deliberations for the rest of the afternoon. Thank you.